Jimmy Dore and Jink Ugar War continues. They had new they don't have much respect for one another. This is one of the nastiest divorces I have ever seen. Jink Ugar and Jimmy Dore get a divorce. This is turning out to be a really terrible divorce. This is a terrible divorce, and everybody's talking about this shit. Nobody's talking about the New York City mayor's election. Oh, you only got an election that's going to, you know, maybe transform the entire fucking nation. Remember how there was police brutality in Kentucky and nobody gave a fuck, and then de Blasio said, we need to change the conversation about policing, and then people in Kentucky and the rest of America was like, well, shit, that's the first time I ever fucking heard of that. And then it changed the entire conversation. Remember when de Blasio single-handedly changed the conversation about policing in America. Remember when he got us ranked choice voting in New York City and then it's going to be a disaster because people don't know what the fuck is going on. Nobody informed them of, of anything. The media didn't tell them how to vote or what the strategy is or what the fuck the point was. It's almost like these motherfuckers are trying to tank democracy and ranked choice elections. Democracy is the answer. There is no democracy. Let's actually have democracy. Let's try democracy. You motherfuckers want to try. You all want to try democracy. Am I the, am I the only one? <laughs> the House votes to repeal the 2002 Iraq War authorization as the Senate prepares to take action. Fucking A. Fucking A. The House votes to repeal the Iraq War authorization. What about the authorization to use military force for Afghanistan? This is the Iraq War one. So this is at the war on terror, but this is a good start. This is a good start. you got to repeal both of those authorizations. Holy fuck. The House is about to end the fucking wars. Get the fuck out of here. The House is about to end the wars. Is it because of Melanie Stansberry? She just got in there? But let's not talk about in the goddamn war. No, no, no. Let's talk about fucking goddamn, you know, Jimmy Dore and Gene Cugard. Bunch of assholes. Bunch of carnival barkers off to the fucking side saying, Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Are you passing legislation? Because if you're not passing legislation, I'm not going to look at you. That's all that fucking matters. Policy, passing legislation, look at you for what, motherfucker? You're not advocating for any legislation. You're not passing any legislation. Look at you. Look at you. Shut the fuck up. Corporate media has it easy. They just have to ask, do you believe in the status quo? And people answer that, not explicitly, but implicitly through their answers, and then they get hired that way. Uh, we hire a wide range of folks, and sometimes it goes wrong, and Jimmy's one of those examples. So, um, and uh, I found out recently uh, about an incident that happened um, uh, while he was working here. And now the person um, that's talking about it is Jimmy. Uh, so... He has been attacking us online over and over again with nothing but lies and smears, some of which I'm going to show you right now. Um, but we still held back, held back, and, and of course it's frustrating. He was a friend, uh, or at least I thought he was, uh, to me and to a lot of people here. And we've been a little shell-shocked by not the disagreements. Who cares? We had disagreements when he was here. That's not an issue at all. Um, but by, honestly, the lies. Uh, and the smears and the attacks that were deeply personal in nature. So uh, both Anna and I got frustrated, and at one point she sent him a DM that, I'm gonna, uh, that Jimmy's going to talk about in this clip that we're going to show you. And it was basically saying, look, we know all these things uh, about you that we haven't shared before, in a way of saying, we are holding back while you're going nuts. Yeah. Okay, he's not really, uh, you know, getting to the goddamn point, taking way too fucking ever. Way too ever like he fucking usually does, right? Putting Anna in the background, putting Baby in the corner, not letting her talk until, what, five minutes into the goddamn video once everybody clicked away? He fucking knows that people only watch the first fucking minute. Now, clearly... Jink and Ugar and Anna Kasparin are weaponizing this incident, but this is an incident, and so let's talk about it. Let's adjudicate this, okay? So, Judge Judy. What would Judge Judy say? <laughs> so, essentially, what's going to happen is Anna Kasparin and Jimmy Dore, they work at TYT, which I don't know, is it like out of Jink's apartment or some shit? So, they're over at Jink's apartment. And Anna Kasparin, uh, in the studio or whatever, she comes in, um, with her classmates. So she's teaching a class at, you know, California University something, and she brings her class into her workplace. So this is a clash of, you know, worlds, right? 
And this is Anna's moment to shine. She's doing TYT, right? She come out of the fucking gutter. She was just doing lighting and shit, and then somehow was able to get on the goddamn stage. Anna's workplace, TYT, when she, you know, the height of TYT. So she is TYT Central. She's got, you know, she's a professor. She's bringing her class into the, you know, TYT studio to give them the, the front lines, to give it. this is what, you know. And then Jimmy Dore made one joke too many. He made jo one joke too many. Apparently, Anna Kasparin was wearing a, a skirt, and she bent over, and he got to see some phone. And Jimmy Dore says, that's a nice new skirt. And I don't know if they just uproariously, you know, thought it was hilarious or kind of nervously laughed because it's like, uh. And it seems also the story, both of their stories are wildly different because she comes back with, well, you got old people pants, right? Look at your pants. They're a bunch of old people fucking pants. And then people are like, mm, all right. I guess that's, you know, it wasn't as funny as Jimmy Dore. But that was Anna Kasparian's moment. That, and Jimmy Dore stole Anna Kasparian's moment. And then she got pissed off, and then eventually Jimmy Dore writes a, you know, I'm a sorry. I'm a sorry. <laughs> he writes some kind of apology letter. So I think, uh, Jimmy Dore, you're in the wrong on this incident. They're weaponizing this incident, but he's wrong, which is why he apologized. I mean, my God, she's got her class. She's TYT Central. She's living high on the hog. She's up in heaven. She's on top of the mountain, but Jimmy Dore wants to rain on her parade. Jimmy Dore wants to pop her balloon. Jimmy Dore wants to knock the ice cream out of her hands. Or what, you think you're going to enjoy that nice vanilla ice cream? And then just knock it out of her hands. So I think that the punishment would be that Anna Kasparin gets to do a spit take on Jimmy Dore. She gets to do a spit take. She gets to stand on the opposite side of the room and then walk over towards Jimmy Dore and then Jimmy says, you know, something and then she's drinking water and then, you know, spits the water out like what he just said is the most ridiculous thing that she's ever heard, but she gets to spit all over his face. Now, that's Okay, a point for TYT. Now, it's kind of crazy watching all those old videos of Anna Kasparin because even though she's, like, commenting on Britney Spears' body and it's real gross and disgusting and very... It did not date well at all, right? That, <laughs> um, then her flashing her old woman's cooch, it's a little, you know, hypocritical. But even back then, when she was commenting on Britney Spears' body, she was just so... Sweet and innocent. She was just so cute. How cute did Anna Kasparian used to be? Just the thought that some men in the world did want to see Britney Spears' cooch made Anna wince. She's like, ew, gross. What? People want to see Britney's genitals? Why? No, gross. And it was, you know, adorable. So it's kind of crazy because it's like they're doing shit that, you know, wouldn't be acceptable today, but she was, you know, more sweet and innocent back then. And in fact... Anna, or Anya Parampil, Anya Parampil almost seems to be beside herself because she's like, Anna Kasparian is a woman, and yet she's talking about other women like this? It doesn't, that doesn't make sense. How can a woman talk about another woman in such, and talk about her body, body shaming? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, Anya Parampil just cannot understand how it's possible that a woman could talk about another woman's Body, the way that Anna Kasparin was talking about. Here's a little. Terms of actual, Anya Parmpil. actual issues regarding foreign policy, imperial policy of the United States. And they went in way too deep. And they couldn't actually, they were like, oh, we're going to have a Syrian, a journalist from Syria on, and we're going to bring in the receipts. And then they were like, wait, we said that, and that's not actually what we have. We have some troll from Brooklyn who's never actually reported on this issue and he's going to come on and say how Aaron's wrong but it looks kind of silly so how are we going to continue to push this narrative that Jimmy is a liar that Jimmy is evil and they came up with uh, an unbased accusation smearing you as a harasser and I think that just says everything about where they're at in terms of their argument because that's why I tweeted today that it's like Godwin's law. Godwin's law is that if you're arguing politically with someone, it's only a matter of time before 
the person who's losing or someone invokes the Holocaust in order to justify their position. Because what that does is that it, it, it shuts down all debate. It shuts down all questioning. You're right. actually smearing your opponent as a Nazi. And what they did in this case is they were back into a corner. They didn't have the information to follow through. And so instead of weaponizing the Holocaust or Nazism, they weaponized sexual harassment, and they weaponized Me Too, because they didn't have anything else. Like nothing. And they, so they decided to internalize the whole situation, and, and it speaks so much to their mentality. It's not about the issues for them. It's not about feminism for them or war or anti-imperialism for them. It's about personal narcissistic trauma. And so that's why they yeah. were like, oh, Jimmy's a sexual harasser, and... I just can't take it seriously because, as you already demonstrated with that segment, Anna herself is willing to play into the most obscene, sexist, anti-woman segment. I can't even imagine forming a, an argument about a female celebrity's vagina, and yet that's what Anna did. And fine, Jimmy, I'm sure you would have never wanted to play that clip. You would have never wanted to get down in the gutter with them on this issue if they weren't going so far as to smear you personally as a sexist. Because that's really disgusting, something that I would oppose. If you're a sexist, I wouldn't be coming on your show. But the reality is, if Anna Kasparian were genuinely opposed to sexism and opposed to misogyny. And if John Iterola, whatever his name is, the other TYT host who I'll have more to say about later, he said sexism and misogyny have to be weeded out of the left. Huh. All right. If that's the case, then quit sharing a desk with Jane Kuger. I was opposed when the media... So that's some Anya palm pill. Now, she made some interesting points. She was talking about a clip about Anna Kasparian and Jean Kugar when they were just starting TYT. They were doing a bunch of provocative, very sensational fucking just trash TV. This is like worse than fucking Jerry Springer shit. Oh, it's pornographic because when they, Britney Spears is having her meltdown, Jean Kugar said, you know, we have the actual pictures of the upskirt on the website of TYT. So anything to get the attention, right? Anything to get the attention to... TYT, it didn't freaking matter. So, Anna Kaspar, and in this clip you have Anna that's going in with it, and she says that Britney Spears' cooch looks like an old woman's cooch, and she said that, you know, it, was, it looks a little weird, and then he says it looks like an old woman's cooch, and she agrees. So, the, even though, you know, she does, I think she comes across as very sweet and innocent, like compared to today where she's like, this is what's right, this is what's wrong. Back then, she's kind of like, well, you know, nobody wants to see that coochie, Brittany. Brittany, you know, close those legs. Nobody wants to see that coochie. She also made an argument about how people were saying that Britney Spears wasn't taking care of herself, but since the coochie had no, it was bald, therefore she said, well, she is taking care of herself. Jink, you guard, he made the declaration that not even he would do her at this point. She's just so gross. Anna tells Brittany to not go outside without underwear, and Jink dropped bitch in the middle while they were talking about it. Bitch! And I guess that's, well, I guess I just said it. The B word. Jink, you guard, dropped the B word in the middle. So there is a little hypocrisy, right? And then Anna Kasparin goes on and thongs up her ass. Got her ass all thonged up. And then she's shaking that thonged ass. I can see it both ways. I mean, if she's got a thong on, then, you know, but if he's looking for, you know, what is it, three seconds? <laughs> you, can't, you can't look for more than three seconds. That's a good rule. It's like, you, why are you staring like that, man? <laughs> you need to knock that shit off. <laughs> so I think this is TYT's problem. This is TYT's. They're pointing out, okay, Jimmy did the thing, but TYT has a fucking culture, this shit, and they've been doing this shit since the beginning. So TYT... The punishment for TYT is you got to get your fucking shit together. You need to apologize for Russiagate. Quit pushing the imperialist fucking narrative. Quit supporting the Liz Warrens of the fucking world. Actually write yourself ten concrete goals that you want to get accomplished by this year's end. 
universal health care in the wars, get socialists in power. There you go. Get the socialists into the judiciary, executive, and the legislature. Universal health care in the wars, and get the socialists into power. And then talk about the New York City mayoral elections, so ranked elections doesn't get murdered forever. None of these independent motherfuckers are saying shit. Brianna Joy Gray, she did, Katie Hopper did, said in virtual Texas. But don't expect the convo coucher, Ryan Grimm, to say shit about the New York City's mayor's race. The mayor of New York City, you know what that's important? My God. The mayor of New York, they changed policing out in California. De Blasio, in the debate, he changed policing in all of America. Why don't none of these motherfuckers, do they hate democracy? They do, do they want it to die? So, TYT, you gotta become fucking progressive or just shut the fuck down. Or just shut the fuck down. Alright, let's listen to two more clips. Or when Ashley Bur Well, let's go. Right? And so, do you have no humanity or decency? And then you're about to find out the answer to that, because this is what he said on air. But before we get to that, yeah. Yeah, so I want to be... Um I want to be clear about something. So the DM that I sent him um, specifically called him out on his constant sexual harassment of me at this place, at, at TYT. Um, I also want to be clear that I didn't talk about it with anyone. I didn't never talked about it with Jake until very recently um, because uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, and so I sent him that DM because the harassment has continued. It's not sexual harassment. It's been constant harassment online that wouldn't go away. It doesn't matter if I ignore him, which some of my friends, my leftist friends, have told me, just ignore him. It'll go away. Just ignore him. Ignore him. Kept going and going and going, directing trolls at me nonstop. And finally, I couldn't take it anymore. So I sent him that message saying, you remember what you did to me. Yeah. And I, I can't stand that he positions himself as this moral fighter for progressive Bernie values. Sanders, Bernie Sanders. When he did his endorsement of Jank, Bernie claiming that he was a sex sexist yeah. and that he was anti-Semitic. I thought that was absurd. I thought, sure, Jank said stupid things in the past, which he's apologized for. And this is a very opportunistic weaponization of comments that he'd made in the past. By the way, on the record, he didn't just make it in passing in an office. He actually sat down and wrote on his blog oh. that women in Miami had a genetic disorder because they weren't having sex with him. He and I both know the kind of behavior he engaged in when he was working here. So I, I wanted to give you that context. So, so by the way, why didn't Anna tell me? Uh, because I would have fired him. And no good deed goes unpunished. So she didn't tell me. He kept uh, working here. Uh, and next thing you know, he's about to tell you a story of what happened. Now, ironically, there's lies in here, too. But l l let us show you who Jimmy Dore actually is. Here, let's begin. But here's, what she, here's how she's trying to threaten me. And I'll tell you why this is a big mistake on her part. She says, I'm sure you remember when you constantly made inappropriate comments about how sexy you found me at work and even felt the need to ask me where I shop for my jeans so you can buy a pair for your wife so she dresses better. Thank you. Uh, that was followed by an apology card you wrote me for the degrading harassment. I've been holding back, letting you run your mouth nonstop as if you're some sort of warrior for what's good in the world. That's going to change. So now she's, instead of saying I'm paid by the Russians or saying I'm working for Assad, she's now going to try to pretend I sexually harassed her when I was at the Young Turks. Now, I give you that as a lead into what he's about, the story he's about to tell you. Okay, so he claims and laughs about how Anna was pretending to, that he was sexually harassing her. Then we don't have to say anything else. Let Jimmy tell you what he thinks happened. I'll tell you this story. The story about uh, uh, that was followed by an apology card you wrote me for a degrading harassment. Uh, Anna Kasparian used to dress when I worked there uh, unbelievably inappropriately for a newsroom. 
she looked like she was going to a rave. The skirt, one time she came into the newsroom with a skirt so short. It wasn't a pencil skirt. It was like a fluffy one, too, but so short that she bent over in front of me, and I literally saw her ass and her thong. She's wearing a thong. I literally saw it. Everybody saw it. And I go, hey, Anna, nice new skirt. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody laughed like they laughed louder than I thought they would. And so it humiliated her. She got humiliated in the middle of the newsroom and I did it and I felt bad. I, I, at that time we were friendly and I. He said, I feel like I'm in a sea of tits in Miami <laughs> and yet I'm only tapping in my toe or something like that. I don't even think the metaphor was that thought out because I'm not having sex with them. I'm in a sea of tits. All right. These people, Anna and John, they're sharing a desk with Jank and you and I, I wouldn't even want to bring up these comments. I actually think it was ridiculous when they attack Jank for these issues because it's obviously not motivated by the issue itself. Just like this. It's motivated by something greater. And at that time, they were attacking Jank when Bernie rescinded his endorsement. They were attacking Jank because they thought he actually posed a threat to the liberal establishment. Right. And yet, that's all fallen apart since that election. At the time, I was like, good, Jank, I would love for you to be in Congress because I think you would actually speak out in defense of the people. And yet, what we saw with Force the Vote is that Jenk and Anna, they're all willing to go along with the mainstream Democratic Party. They're not actually going to fight on these issues, health care, education. Not and fight. so that's why I oppose them. Yeah. And it was false for the Democratic Party to see them as a threat because at the end of the day... That was just busting her balls, right, for, for dressing like that in the newsroom. <laughs> You're going to bend over and show me your ass? I think that's a little... I, I'm not offended, but I think that's a little risque. Um, imagine if I did that. I walked around and showed my ass to everybody. So, uh, when she did, so when I did that, so she got really mad. She got, you know, she got humiliated. Her face turned red. She tried to insult me back, and it just fell flat, and she looked, you know, bad. And I felt bad for her. I didn't, I, I didn't want to make her feel that, but I just wanted to make a little joke. And um, all I said was, hey, Anna, nice news skirt. And everybody in the newsroom, because everybody saw how inappropriate she dresses. She used to dress. And everybody saw it. And uh, so that's why it got such a huge laugh, and she was so humiliated. Wow, look at this. 94% of people believe company culture is important to an organization's success. The day they're just feeding into that narrative. Yes. Uh, the Young Turks progressive founder urged his staff not to unionize. Let's, let's remember that. Let's watch this. It's, and most of all, it's just super sad. It's a, he's a sad, weak man. Uh, and he's chasing... Um, v now, Jenk is saying this into a mirror. Just so you know, Jenk, who told people, hey, I put some naked pictures of a celebrity's vagina that was taken against her will up her skirt. They're at my website. <laughs> Go there now. I took the blur out of it so you could see it. And I wouldn't bang her anyway. But he would. But of course, this is, this is the guy trying to now pretend that uh, he's, he's Mr. Uh, Boy Scout and attention and money and, and the, yeah, here we go it, and most of all it's just super sad it's a, he's a sad weak man uh, and he's chasing um, views and attention and money and, and the, when he attacks us he gets more popularity, both from the right wing and more views, because the algorithms say, hey, that's the biggest show. You mention them, you're going to get more views. Yep. 